Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into a very special and long overdue LEGO Batman video. Today we are looking at the brand new set celebrating 85 years of Batman this year in 2024. This is set number 76271, the Gotham City Skyline. This is our first ever Batman the Animated Series set and has 4,210 pieces, retailing for $299.99 USD or $389.99 Canadian beginning on April the 1st if you're a LEGO Insiders member or you're going to have to wait until April the 4th if you are not. This will be available at LEGO stores and LEGO shop at home. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. Believe it or not, there are actual products launching on April the 1st for LEGO and this spectacular set that we have known about for quite some time is finally here and to see this all finished um, in all of its glory it is just incredible. Now, I was actually sent this early by Lego and Land to do a review for, and later on today, you're going to see a reaction and an unboxing video to that. But I am just so dying to talk about this set, uh, to review this, to show you how everything works. And then, of course, we're also going to have like an Easter egg and reference breakdown video because there's so much to go through and talk about that I just can't do in this video and I can't do it in the review. So if you want, though, in this video, there are chapters and topics down below if you want to hop around to different things like just the minifigures or the references or some of the buildings and such. But I think the most important thing to start with and talk about is the actual set from afar. This thing is 76 centimeters wide and is... 41.6 centimeters tall. This thing is absolutely massive. You can see from this 360 spin video that there are actually some spots in the back that use those art pieces that you can hang this up on your wall. This is amazing. Like it has captured the Gotham City skyline so, so well here with the iconic red sky. You've got uh, the Gotham City Police Department blimps there hovering over the city shining their lights down just like we see at the very start of the intro to every episode and then we've also got just small little details here like Batman standing on top of one of the skyscrapers here in this magnificent skyline. You do have the bat signal here and that is actually shining from the GCPD building down below which is just one of many iconic locations throughout this thing. So uh, there are hidden things inside, but I just want to look at this from outside right now and go from left to right here. Of course, we've got Arkham Asylum. How could you not feature an Arkham Asylum section here? You've also got like a little botanical gardens down below. And then to the right of that, we've got Ace Chemicals, which looks great. I love all the smoke coming out of the different stacks and all that. And down below, we've got Joker's Amusement Area, which is really interesting because that's actually a reference to a section inside of a casino. So that's kind of cool that we've got that here. I love the giant Ferris wheel there too. And then we've also got here the Laugh Palace to where they're having this uh, laugh off. Of course, that's the iconic episode where Condiment King, we have a figure of him, was first debuted. We've also got this incredible two by two piece down below there and that is of the gray ghost and that like even just talking about that gets me emotional um to have adam west play this person who inspired batman on the show and to have now you know kevin conroy having passed and obviously a lot of the other characters here that are referenced having them pass away now it just this tribute set just means that much more uh, you've got uh, the clock tower, and you can see the hands on the clock says 315, which is, of course, very important, and we'll come back to that. And to the right, if, if you go down, you've got uh, the diamond exchange there. You have the Gotham City Museum, which is holding some sort of charity reception. You've got there the hospital and just incredible looking buildings in, in behind, which are all references to different buildings in the show. And then, of course, the GCPD, like we talked about. And going on up behind that, though, we've got Wayne Enterprise. I'm not sure what this building is with the four statues. If you figure it out, please let me know. But we've got uh, the Gotham City Opera there. And that's pretty neat with all of those uh, little posters up. And then you've got Goth Corp with a bunch of ice on the outside because of Mr. Freeze. 
We've got the Gotham City Courthouse there. We have this really cool neon cat sign. We've got the Galaxy Broadcasting Building up above that. And then a question mark there in behind the... Uh, I think that's just meant to be... It's not a prison. It's just window frames there using the cell piece. Polly's reference down below. And then we've also got uh, the Wild Deuces, the Stack Deck... And up above that, Wayne Manor. And, of course, the moon in the back with... I love the, the clouds and all that. And I haven't talked about this yet, but the Batman word there at the top is just incredible. To have that font being represented here in Lego pieces is just uh, absolutely amazing. I, I want to make note of a couple of really cool things here. We've, of course, got the Batwing as well included, which looks great. I really hope we get a set of that in the future minifigure scale. And then going through here, the secret section, shall we? We've got when you remove Wayne Manor, you have Alfred inside, as well as we've got uh, the grandfather clock that leads into the Batcave. You can see how that lines up perfectly. I love that Batcave design there with the Bat computer in red. You can see we've even got the, the big penny, the giant penny in the back, and Robin and Batgirl there too. And what's cool about this is the whole cave is in the symbol of the Batman symbol. And I'm just... I'm really sad that that shadow box from last year, it's not Batman the Animated Series because, oh my goodness, would that have been insane to get? Uh, anyways, it's neither here nor there. We, we've got a couple cool things here, like the Batmobile is able to actually sit inside there. So continuing through here, we've got uh, referenced here the Riddler, Clayface, and you can see all the different monitors that he's breaking that is showing Basil Carlo's uh, different performances. Uh, we've got Catwoman in her apartment, Freeze and Summer Gleason at Gothcorp. I love all the sort of icicles up at the top of the roof there. We have the Penguin here, and just because we're talking about all the characters again, Batman on the top of the roof. We have inside the GCPD, Rene Montoya, Harvey Bullock, and Commissioner Jim Gordon there, which is awesome. Uh, down below in the museum, we've got the Scarecrow who's letting out a bunch of fear talks in there in red. We've also got Ra's al Ghul, and I think that's meant to s sort of be like a coffin or something. I don't know, some sort of sarcophagus is my guess. Let me know if you've got a better thought. We have inside the hospital Two-Face with the iconic window in the back there. He may not have a, had a gun in that scene or wearing his iconic suit, but that's still cool that they referenced that window. We've also got here Harley and Ivy, and they've got a bunch of diamonds and different things inside of this place. And then we've got <laughs> the Condiment King spraying ketchup and mustard there, which is just insane. The Clock King is being referenced, which is awesome. We do actually have a figure of him from the Lego Batman movie, uh, just like Condiment King. We've got here the Joker inside of Ace Chemicals. There's even a vat of acid there, which I think is really cool. And then we've also got Killer Croc fighting Bane, which I also just love the fact that he's holding the rock because I always love the line from Almost Got Him of, and then I hit him with a rock. Like, that's just, I love that. We've got the duck for the penguin there, which is really fun. And then Locked Up in Arkham is probably the craziest thing referenced here. We have here making their first ever official debut. Ladies and gentlemen, Scarface and the Ventriloquist, Baby Doll, and the Mad Hatter, who we have been waiting to get since 2008, since he was first appeared in the Lego Batman video game. He's the final person of those teams, Joker, Riddler, and Penguins teams that we need in minifigure form. But we've got a reference to him here. We're just that much closer. And I, I really hope it happens. Now, speaking of characters, probably... One of the other most exciting things here is the fact that we're getting four minifigures inside of this set. On top of a gorgeous new gargoyle display, I think this one is probably the best that we've gotten out of any of the ones that we've had from other big Batman sets. We have here Catwoman, who looks awesome. I, I think, I know that some people are going to be upset with the headpiece there, the Black Panther ears, but I think it works well. I love the, the torso printing, the face printing. It's so surreal to me to have physical versions of these characters that I've drawn so, so long ago, dying to finally have. Oh my goodness. And of course, Batman himself in this iconic outfit with the dark blue and black cape is just amazing. He's got the new cowl that was introduced last year. The torso, it looks good. A little too, I don't know, too much detail on the torso? Does that make sense? I don't know. But still great 
I love the the legs there too. Awesome. Harley Quinn. How, how could you not put Harley in here? Her first appearance, of course, was from Batman the Animated Series. It created this character, this phenomenon. She looks great. Her out, it's it's probably probably my favorite outfit we've ever had for her. She just looks great. And then we've got the Clown Prince of Crime. Oh my goodness. The Joker here who looks so good. They recolored that hair in dark green and it works so darn well for him. Like I really think it works well. Obviously new hair piece would have been ideal. Would have been ideal. Uh, and the, the torso printing is amazing. The face, I love it a lot. That They really captured the smile in the eyes there. Would have loved maybe thicken the eyebrows a bit or the lack thereof you know just a little bit more in black but other than that he looks amazing i love the stick of dynamite there as well which is just great would have loved some leg printing for him he's the only one but still really really awesome now before you go out and get this set just for the figures i do gotta let you know there are rumors of other batman the animated series sets coming in the summer and everyone but Catwoman is rumored to be appearing in those. So she might be the only one remaining exclusive. Maybe those will have different face prints or different something to keep these exclusive. I'm not too sure. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is our first look at the first ever Batman the Animated Series set. This is a very, very special set to me. Uh, like I said up above, like without Batman the Animated Series, I would not be here probably talking about this set. It's been so informative and impactful for so many people. So for this to be picked as this tribute for 85 years of Batman, I'm so excited to talk with you guys about so much more stuff here included in future videos with the review and the Easter egg video. So stay tuned for that. And of course, the unboxing, I'll link all that at the end here once it is public. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.